only because of the blood we can have a prosperous year. We can have a great year. Because through the blood, today is a new opportunity. Today is a new opportunity. And when I stand through the blood, in the blood, and because of the blood, it's because of what he has done, we can have an excellent year. Because of what he has done through the cross, we have a hopeful future. And as we're going to look in this year with our year with what God has said to us, for us and for the nations, hope. I say the hope for a new year, hope for an excellent year is because of the blood. It's because of the blood. Let's everybody say it's because of the blood. Let me and you, we can look ahead and where yesterday, this year cannot be the same as last year. With any form of struggle that we had, no, it will be because of the blood. If we will build on the successes of last year, on that what went right in last year, it will be because of the grace of God. We had success. You had success in last year because of the grace of God. You are forgiven because of the grace of God. For that what happened in the wrong way, you will overcome, first of all, according to Revelation 12, verse 11, you will overcome because of that blood of the Lamb. That's where you will start. And out of and from the place of the blood, you will walk into the testimony. They overcame through the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and that they didn't love their own lives until even into death. So may that be the new year. When you think of this excellent year laying ahead. It's because of the blood, the new is here. The grace is here. Grace that means enablement. Amazing enablement that saved a wretch like me. Amazing grace, that word. That God gave me the ability to walk as a child of God. God gave me the ability to hear his voice. God gave me the ability to receive his love. God gave me the ability to be led by his emotion, to be led by his passion, and that is the love. Let the love of God compel us to Corinthians 5. Amen? So may you be driven in that. Let it be so. Now I can say just amen now, and if I can have you to really take this, to really take this, my brother, my sister, that you look at your future through the blood. But if you are haunted by the past. If you are looking at the future because of the mistakes of the past. Or because of the successes of the past. Instead of looking back at the blood. Then you're going to build based on the success. Not based on what God has given you for today. When I look back, everything is because of the blood. I honor God. When I look back, I honor God that what I could achieve was because of his grace. And what happened wrong through his forgiveness and what I can learn from the wrong, I can look ahead. That's why I can learn from my mistakes and I can build on that what was successful in the past. Only because of the blood. And that makes you totally different than the man out there in the world. Totally. Because he can build on his success. But if it's not built on the foundation of who Christ is, when the storm comes, the house will fall. But your house will not fall. As you look at the word of the cross and build your house on the rock, the word of the cross, the foundation, the revelation of who God is. Let that be so. And ask Holy Spirit, even in this week, in this, in the, as we walk into this new season, ask him, God, what did I build? What is being built on the revelation of who you are? Because a revelation is a life. It's not just information that I know. It's not, I know that Christ is the rock, and I know this, and I know that. And we know a lot about the word. But the foundation of your life is... Something that is alive. It's the word that is alive in you. That's the foundation. Not just the word. The revelation of who he is. That's the foundation for your life. 
That's the foundation for you, what you're going to do in this year. Say, God, help me and show me. And Holy Spirit, help me to that this word will be alive in me. Amen? Because then you have foundation and then you can build that what will stand for eternity. That what will have eternal value. What does it mean? Your house will go with you to heaven. Your life will go with you. Um, eternal value. So that your children and their children can build on what you've built. Because it's quality. Because Christ is seen in that. That when you pray for your children, for your grandchildren, for the new generation. If you have children or not. That you will pray for the new generation. But what you are praying is foundational. What you are praying has eternal value. Because you pray from a place of revelation. You pray from a pr place where the word is alive. And what is in your prayer is the word of God. And it's alive and it's active. And it is sent forth and will accomplish what it was sent for. According to Isaiah 55. Amen. So that what you bring forth in your prayer. In your faith statement. In what you say. In your conversations. When it's coming from a revelation of who he is. That means it's as if God himself would say that. In this season. In this day. This is what he would say today. That is life. That is life. That is foundational for people around you. That's foundational what you speak over this nation. Over the nations. That is foundational what you speak over that school. Over those kids. Those babies. Let it be so. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Let's say we can go home now. Oh. <laughs> There's no catch in it. Just three points quickly further. I think this was actually what I had to give, but let's, for the sake of giving the three points, you know. <laughs> First of all, fears. What are you going to do with fears in your life? Fear. Fear. Secondly, thoughts or words? Thoughts, okay. Thoughts, it's words in your, in your head. Thoughts, yeah. What you are thinking about, you're going you're gonna to give utterance to in words. You can call it thoughts, you can call it words. And thirdly, the presence. There will always be a presence in you or around you. A presence in you or around you. Now I went with a 316, part of my day with. Everybody say 316. The first thing about fear, what will drive you? What will, what will take you somewhere? Fear will keep you in hiding. That you will not stand up for Christ. You will not speak the word of God. You will not bring utterance to what you believe God is saying. Fear to live out who you really are. That's the first thing. Even in the perfect, perfect surroundings. The Garden of Eden. Fear. Took them in hiding. Fear so that you will hide who you really are. Fear so that you will hide. And hide away from what God has for you. And you need to ask Holy Spirit. You will not just know it. You need to ask Holy Spirit. Fear that you will not be forgiven. Fear that you will be shamed. Fear that you will not get it right. Fear that there will be a lack. Fear that... And it's not like fear is always like trembling. It's not like you are trembling. And sometimes fear and to be unsure about something is very close to one another. I'm not sure about this thing. Is it doubting or is it because of fear? The first thing that manifested after they did wrong. After weakness came in, they went in hiding in the Garden of Eden. To hide from yourself 
and who you think you are. And because of how you see yourself and what you've done, you go into hiding. God is calling you out of that place. He's calling you by name. Adam, Adam, where are you? God knew where he was. It was not like God was confused. Hello? But he wanted them to come out. He wanted them to respond to his word. Amen? God knows exactly where you are. But he's calling you by name to come out to him. To him. You with your whole life to stand before him. If there's going to be discipline or not discipline. Discipline only because he loves you. Every son that he accepts, he tweets, he honors as his child through discipline. Are we with one another? You can hide yourself. Secondly, even your talents. That what you have. The man with the one talent, he feared because of his master. You're a hot master. And reap where you didn't sow. And because of the fear that he had. Took what he had in hiding. Are you with me? Not sure what can happen. With the talents. And that's first of all. You're the means that you have. But secondly also. Yeah your abilities. That what God has given you. And then also your future. Hide from your future. And because of fear, do certain things so that there's not, no lack for the future, no lack for my children or my grandchildren. Because of that fear, I work very hard. But it's a waste because it's based on fear. What was brought in through your life based on fear. No, that's not the way it can be. In fear hiding yourself, in fear hiding the abilities and the means that God has given you, and in fear for what could happen in the future, even for the new generation. God is calling you into a certain place or is in a different nation. That's one thing. But going there because of fear of what could happen in the country, somebody can honor that demon. Or I can choose to honor God and hear, God, what are you saying to me? That where I will go, I will go there because you are there with me. You are waiting for me in that new job, in that other opportunity. Or if you are here with me where I am now, help me to deal with that fear. I will not honor that fear. I will honor you. Are you with me? That first thing that came out, the fear. But John 3.16, you can remember that. We're going for the 3.16 today. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever will believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. So that whoever believes in him, it's not just about believing, but believe in a God that loved me so much that he gave his only son. That's the whole sentence there in that scripture. The devil believe in God, <laughs> for sure. They definitely know that he is real. They believe more in God, a lot of devils, than many people. That even think that there is no God. But that faith will not... Save that devil and take the atheist to hell. But believe in the whole package. For God, my father, so loved the world. So loved you and me. That he gave his son. So that then, whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Are you with me? And we know that the fear, according to 1 John 4. Verse 18, perfect love drives out all fear. The opposite of fear is not faith. Opposite of faith is unbelief. But the opposite of fear is love. 
You drive out the fear, not by stepping out in faith, but you drive out the fear by receiving the love from your Father. So that you can be safe and secure with your Father. To be found in His love, found in His heart, to see His passion for you. Not, first of all, to do certain things, but for who you are in Him and with Him. Fear has no place in you. Is it not Romans 8? God has not given... No, no, no. That's 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Not of fear, but first of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. Romans 8 says you haven't received spirit of slavery. To fear again. But slavery is the fear. Slavery and fear connected. Slavery and fear connected. And based on fear many times I stress. Based on fear. Stress is not the root. But based on fear I stress. Based on fear I have the anxiety. Based on fear all a lot of rubbish manifests. But I need to deal with the fear by receiving the love. By dealing with the love of God for my life. I need to deal with the motivation, the passion that is in God, my Father, for me. You need to come into that place of wholeness because of His love that brings this, the healing. His love that brings the healing. That you know, I'm not just safe, I'm secure in His love. Because he loved me so much, that's why he will never leave me, never forsake me. Because he loved me so much, he forgave me. Because he loved me so much, he organized the salvation plan through his son. Because he loved me so much, everything what Jesus did on earth was to express the heart of the Father. Because he loved us so much. That's why for the joy set before Jesus, he went to the cross. Hebrews 12, hey, verse 2. You must write that down. You must remember that. Amen. We are with John 3, 16. Other one, 1 John 3, 16. You can write that down. 1 John 3, 16. 1 John 3, 16. Verse 16, hey, we have John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. Let me read it. This is how we know that what love is. This is how we know what love is. What is it all about? Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. The love will work. The love will work if you can give it away also. If there's a flow, then it can work. Let's read it again. This is how we know what love is. If I know what love is, I will be able to give it away. If I know what love is, you, will, you can evaluate that in how you love people and love yourself. If the commandment is there, the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that is the greatest commandment. God will not command you to do something if he does not enable you to do that. Amen? So there's, the, if the opposite is fear, it's not there's not a fear towards God to run away. There's a fear that is called respect. The fear of the Lord. Eh? Let's not confuse the two. There's a fear that is based on respect. There's a fear based on, it's the opposite of love. Where I run away. No, we are not in that place. But if I can receive, if I can receive the love, Instead of walking in fear, fear of performance, fear that I will be in trouble, fear that things are not right with me and God. If I can settle that, 
then I can love myself and not fear that I will stand ashamed. Not fear that I will not be able to make it. Fear that I will make the wrong decision. Fear I will fall in that sin again. Fear that I will be rejected. Fear. Then I need to deal, secondly, with a fear in me about myself. Adam and Eve, fear about what can happen now. I need to deal with a fear in me about me so that I can follow and be obedient to the commandment you need to love yourself. And that love is not a feeling. You can feel very frustrated about yourself. Maybe only me. You can feel frustrated about a lot of stuff. But first of all, you need to deal inside here. Because many, 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 many of our issues, and why we could in the past, not anymore, could get easily offended with people or frustrated with people or irritated with people is because it's working in me towards myself. I'm frustrated with myself. I'm irritated with myself. I must deal with myself. But it, if I'm dealing with myself, then it will be easier with people. Hello? Are you with me? I'm not talking about to, to gain acceptance or to try to get acceptance. At the end of the day, that is manipulating people for what I need. No, I need to be secure in him. I need to find myself in him. I need to become whole in him. Amen. For that is eternal. That is eternal life. You can write that down. John 17, 3. Eh? That is eternal life that they may know you. And the one that you've sent. To know the Father and the Son whom he has sent. That is eternal life. That will have eternal value for you in 2022. And you will walk into the substance that you will find into this year. And it's based on you knowing the Father. Knowing the Son. Put substance in this year like never before. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to put substance in this year. Okay. And that is knowing the Father, knowing the Son. So that my brother, my sister, then I will not fear rejection of others. I will not fear what could happen. I will not fear what man can do to me. I will not fear what they will say about me. I will not fear about things going wrong. You're going to make mistakes. Towards people. You could most probably disappoint some people this year. With things that you do wrong. But fear. Fear cannot be there as a basis of. They're going to reject me. But I know. I'm loved by God. And I can love myself. Even though. Mistakes. I can love myself. And I don't have to fear that people will reject me. Because I know how heaven loves me. And how I can love myself. I can be content with who I am. And from that place, I have the privilege to lay down my life and love others. I have the privilege to show the God of heaven. The God of the universe. To show his passion to others. I have the privilege, I have the honor to do that. I don't have, first of all, the struggle to do it. I first need to understand I have the honor that my father trusts me so much that he believes that I will be able to show his love to everyone around me. May God help me, may God help you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, this is love. He laid down his life. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. And in that place, it will flow. Dead Sea is a Dead Sea because of what? There's an inflow and no outflow. No, nothing going out. It's just coming in. And there it dies. You will not die in your circumstances. You can have the most fresh water coming into the Dead Sea. It will die. Are you with me? It will die. But if you can give out, if you can give it out, 
it will stay fresh. It will stay fresh. It will stay fresh. Let it be so in Jesus' name. John 3.16. 1 John 3.16. Secondly, words, thoughts. Colossians 3.16. Everybody say Colossians 3 verse 16. We actually have spoken about this one quite a few times. What are you thinking about this year? What is your opinion about the whole COVID story? Oh, man, you've heard some thoughts, some opinions, some words about this like never before. And as we've said so many times, yes, the sign in the end time will be deception. Deception based on words, based on thoughts. What people are thinking, and in their thinking, they become deceived And what they utter is the deception of the thoughts that they have in their minds. Because what? They receive the words from the enemy. They receive the words from the deceiver. There's words that will set you free. The word of truth. There's truth that will set you free. Hello? But facts can be be manipulated. When you believe the truth above the facts, facts must fall in line then facts cannot manipulate and deceive you. But there can be a lot of factual things. By fact this, by fact that. But then what you do with the facts, if you deal with the facts without the truth, the facts will surely deceive and mislead you and manipulate you into deception. But when you come with the truth of the word and look at the facts and look through the word of God, God's thoughts, God's word, then you will not be deceived. Because my brother and my sister, they will be facts. And by fact, it will be really factually correct. But if you are not hiding yourself and running into the truth, into God's words about the situation, what he's thinking about this, what he's thinking about that. God, what is your thoughts about this? Sometimes it's not just to know his will, because sometimes just to know his will is, God, what must I do? What must I do? What must I do? But God, what is your thoughts about this? It's just sometime, my brother, my sister, that you must go and sit with God. And just, God just wants to share his thoughts about that thing. His opinion. God, what are your thoughts about the government? What are your thoughts about the future? What are your thoughts about certain things that happen? Put that sentence somewhere in this year, in your time with God. Wanneer jij net met God bekie gesels. God wil betekent net met jou gesels. Commune with you. Where it's not just in the office of the CEO and your boss. And God, what is your will? What must I do? What mustn't I do? How must I deal with this? How must this be corrected? How must that be corrected? Sorry for this, Lord. Forgive me for this. And, and we are in the office, in the workplace. And not with our father in his home. Oh man. May God help you. May God help me. God, what are your thoughts about this? Are you having with your friends all this thing? Of, uh, what do you think must I, what must I do? What mustn't I do? Of sit je beteken met vriende in je gesels. Or sometimes you're at peace and you enjoy and you are fulfilled with friends where you just care. What is care in English? Fellowship. Where you have fellowship. It sounds still very official. <laughs> where you have a wonderful time with one another and enjoy one another. Amen. Let's go into that place. Because then we hear all the thoughts about what the world, what they are saying. And actually sometimes have some fellowship with them based on the sharing of thoughts and and thinking. I'm thinking this because I read this and I read this and I heard this from this guy, these guys, or on the news. And I know the fellowship, the gesels with the guys out there. 
But then in my walk with God, it's too, sometimes too official. You must respect God. But that doesn't mean everything must be official. Are you with me? That doesn't mean everything must be official. It's a time of just to be with him. Just to be with him. But sometimes, you know, if, with a boss or somebody, if you have respect, you don't want to waste his time. And our, in our concept, it's not like we think we're going to waste God's time. But in the concept, it's like you become very official. If you have respect for God, you are serious. No. That is not necessarily just linked. When you have respect for God, you are serious about some stuff. That's true in the sense of serious that I give my attention, I give my life, I will really do it. I mean what I say, it's not fake, I'm not going to lie, I'm giving myself full out. In that context, it's serious and respect for God. But serious doesn't mean just gesels. Now guys, uh, we had no fun time, let's get serious. Be careful in our definition of the two. Eh? Otherwise, sometimes it can be such an effort to get into the Word. Effort to pray. Effort to have the time with God. Oh, and the devil is standing against me to have this time with God. No, because you sometimes take the thing too serious. The whole concept of time with Him. So we're going to talk about some job. We're going to talk about some stuff that needs to change, some stuff that is good. How are we going to build? How are we going to build kingdom with God? Co-workers with Christ. Yes. But how will we just be with him? Let's say, I'm going to enjoy my time with God. Hallelujah. That's why in the singing... Why in the singing so many times is it so that you will know what to do tomorrow? No, in the singing so that from this place there's a joy. From this place there's a fulfillment. From this place there's just, I love him for who he is. Amen? So that's why even in singing, I want to say, God wants to align that. That we are not just talking about the serious stuff. Yeah, with the CEO and all the big shots, you're coming in there and you are singing and you are saying, hey, 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 stop, 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 stop. We must get serious now. But with God, he enjoys it. When you can enjoy life. What father is there that you only want your child to be very serious about everything and do everything right and nothing wrong and everything must just be right? What father is there that if his child can enjoy life in a beautiful way with God, but in a beautiful way, that the father is not blessed and the mother is not blessed. Is that true? That you can see how that little child is enjoying what he's doing and he's doing nothing wrong, but he's enjoying what he's doing. That's many times such a blessing. Not true? No, that is also your father. That one, one, one of the hundred things of how to get into that place is singing. That's one of the things that he has put in you. There's a song in your heart and he's the essence of the song. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you with me? We said this is the last short service that we will have. Hey, Because it's still holiday. But we are enjoying the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let me get away there. Colossians 3.16, let me read it. We didn't read it. Hmm. Sixteen. Let the message of Christ, the words of Christ, dwell among you richly as you teach as you what as you teach and admonish 
one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. There will be a richness of God's Word. If you know how to be excited about the Word, how to sing the Word to one another, it says, how will the Word dwell among us richly? As you teach, as you admonish, admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. When there's a gratitude, when I'm thankful for my life, I'm protecting my heart not to get into the stress, not to get into the this, not to get into depression, not to get into discouragement, not to get into the, all those other chachis. Don't just go and stand seriously and fight this thing, fight this depression, fight this negativity and fight. Come as a little child and enter the kingdom. And as you enter the kingdom, you are leaving another kingdom. Hello? <laughs> Don't fight against this kingdom. Give him some rejection. <laughs> Don't give him respect in that sense. Give him the other side. And walk into, enter the kingdom of God. As a what? As a little child. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. And as a little child, with a faith, if you don't change and become like a little child, the attitude of the little child, the genuineness, the sincerity in a little child, and enter that place, then you are exiting some other place. So as you enter certain facets in this year, just remember, that's the way you are. Do you say exiting or exit? You exit some other stuff. Amen. Get into the light. Darkness must flee. Don't fight the darkness, please. Don't fight the darkness. That's the clown skit. But enter the light and the darkness. Light will deal with darkness. Amen. He is the light of the world. Enter the light and the darkness must leave. And the darkness must leave. Let it be so. The word will dwell richly among you. You know when there's a few guys and they are in, into racism or into revenge. You can feel when they speak how they are encouraged. How they find energy in that demonic rubbish of racism. Or that demonic rubbish of revenge. Or that demonic rubbish of total deception or of, of fear or whatever. And it's like that word is alive among them. And when they come together, we say, I'll take a psych car up. Who say yet it? Okay, psych is already English, hey. They are psyching one another up. Okay, are you with me? Something like that. And because it's becoming alive, what they believe. The guys that are fighting against the enemy and the corporal or the guys encouraging them. And suddenly there's this courage that is alive in everybody to give their lives full out. And yay! And they're going to go. Half of them are going to die. But they're going to go with it. When last were you really excited about the word of God in conversation with one another? That is when the words start to dwell richly among you. Hello? When we sing that together we are excited about the words. We're excited about what we sing about our God and how we love Him and respect Him and giving ourselves and want to give ourselves to Him. Amen. Let us come alive with His word. Let us come alive together as we stand with His word. Amen. And not just seriously dealing with all the stuff and getting everything in line. And you find also someone that enjoys his work. What a blessing when you have a job and you can enjoy it. There's many people that have a job because they need to provide. And nothing wrong. But if you can trust God to enjoy your work, how must I enjoy it? Because first of all, it starts with whatever you do, you do as if unto the Lord. 
And when you see that as an honor, you see that as a privilege, and you see God with you, it's not, first of all, what you do, but it's, first of all, who you do it with. Not true? You know that saying, hey. And that fulfillment is, first of all, with whom you are doing it. That's the first thing. You let me admit. It's not my daughter first saying, Papa, come and swim with me. You know, and we have a swimming pool under the trees. It's very cold. Very cold. So after she promised, she will make me two times coffee and two times she will make a meal. Then uh, I put myself in the sacrifice of the swimming pool. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's not, first of all, what you do in that. I didn't like it. But it's with whom you did it. And we had a wonderful time. Okay. Good. So, in your job, with your job, with what you do, it's first of all not, oh, I don't like this job. Your problem is you're not doing it with Christ. In your studies, in what you do, in the washing, in the whatever. You don't enjoy it, first of all, because you don't do it with Christ and you don't do it for Him. You do it with Him and then you do it for Him. Amen? Both. Don't let people say, you mustn't work for the Lord, you must work with Him. No, that's, that's nonsense. It's both. You do it for Him because you worship Him. Your focus is Him. Do everything what you do as if unto the Lord. That means you do it for Him. But don't try to do it Without him, you will not get it right. That's performance. And you will never be able to do it for him. If you cannot do it with him. Amen. Remember, Holy Spirit always put the focus on Jesus. So when you do it with Holy Spirit, the focus will always be on Jesus. You will be able to do it for Jesus and to Jesus and unto Jesus if you do it with the Spirit of God. Because he's faithful to put the focus on Jesus. Holy Spirit is faithful. And his work in you will always, always, always be to put the focus on Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit is so that it will be the character of Jesus. The character of Christ be seen through you and in you. That's his agenda. That's his agenda. Right through everything. So first of all, start in your job to start to enjoy. First see it as the privilege and first make sure you are doing it as if unto the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Unto the Lord. You don't see that boss that's ugly with you, that's, that's unfair or this or the frustration about stuff that is not working, working out. What is not working out is you're not doing it for Christ. But if you're doing it for Christ, even if though it's not working out yet, God will start to give you strategy. How to put excellence. Are you with me? And there's not a breakthrough yet, but you have excellence in your job. Why? Because the breakthrough is there. No. Because you're doing it for Christ. There's excellence in your job if you can do it for Christ. You with me? Let's say that there's excellence in my job. If I can do it for Christ with the Holy Spirit. Oh, please remember that one. Okay, that was about words. Colossians 3.16. Then the last one about words. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. 2 Timothy, write that down. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. One day by faith, I'm going to see people listen to the pastor. Hallelujah. Just write that down. You know? Verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. Okay. So the first one was a lot how to enjoy the word. How to enjoy the word. How to have wonderful conversations. How to have fellowship. That doesn't mean we must quote scripture the whole time in when we have fellowship together and have some coffee together or 
um, eat together, have a feast together. Hello? That's enjoying one another with the word and with the excitement about God. Yes. But secondly then, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture, God's breath is in it. God's awesome is in your word. Sy lewe is in die woord. It's God breathed. As jylle met my. When God breathed his, is it ruach, ne? Breath in mankind and he came alive. So today, he's breathing over you to come alive. To come alive. Not to be stuck in the mud. Okay, yeah, that can work. Not to get stuck in the mud, in the mud of your own life. Get stuck in yourself. Get stuck in your thoughts. Get stuck in your emotions. Get stuck in how you see yourself. Get stuck in the mud, in all that hut. And let God breathe over you. So you come alive. So that you can come alive. God breathe over me. What does it mean? Position yourself so that he can breathe over you. And that is what? Getting to the word. Because the word... All scripture is God breathed. In the word is God's breath. You take the word, it's God's breathing over you. And you're coming alive with the revelation, the truth that will set you free. Amen. How can you not allow God to breathe over you? And you are frustrated, you are stuck, that you are stuck in the mud. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Give yourself at least in that place so that God can breathe over you. How? By getting into the word. By meditating the word. By, by reciting. By learning. Repeating, repeating, repeating. Are you with me? Until you experience the breath of God. Let's say, I will get into the word until I experience the breath of God. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. And in his breath, it's useful for teaching, rebuking. Teaching is I'm finding strategy. I'm finding reason. I'm finding sense in, in things in life. Rebuking, correcting. Rebuking because I'm in trouble. No, rebuking because I'm a son. Correcting so that I will be aligned and don't waste my life and mess it up. And training in righteousness. Training in righteousness. Training in righteousness. What? Training how to be in the right place with God. Training in righteousness so that I can stand with stature in my situation. I'm not a product of my circumstance. I'm a product of the heart of the Father. Training in righteousness. How to be in the right place in God's stature, in God's authority. That what is coming into that place is the authority of God. And God's hand on me. I'm trained how to have God's hand on me and not the hand of the flesh and circumstances. Hurts, disappointments. Not the hand of that disappointments. But the hand of God over my life. I'm trained how to walk. With my father's hand over my life. That is, I'm trained in righteousness. Let's ons met mekaar. Let's ons met mekaar. Right. Last one. What was the last one? The third one? The presence. Presence. Presence of who? I want to give you Luke 3 verse 16. Luke 3 verse 16. There comes the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He will bring you into the place that you will live in the presence of Holy Spirit and God, God's fire. God's fire is holiness. God's fire is set apart for Him. There is the one. And he will bring you into the presence. And that you will be baptized into the presence of Holy Spirit and fire. That the beautiful fire that will cause the gold to become more beautiful. Oh, 
the world and my flesh wants to baptize me so that I will be living in the presence of my flesh and my weakness and my circumstances and what the enemy can throw at me. Hello? But you surrender yourself to God. And then he takes you and he baptizes you into the place where you will always be in his presence. In the presence of the Holy Spirit and in the presence of his fire. But then the question, what will you do in the presence of the Holy Spirit? What will you do in the presence of his holy fire? It's there. Everything is provided for you. Everything is provided for you. Holy Spirit is so ready, so ready, so ready to take the word of God and, and bring the enlightenment, bring the truth in you. He's so ready. He's in you. He's around you. He's with you. His presence. Or you will live. You can see somebody that is just negative. When you come into his presence and he was so intimate with negativity, you experience the negativity. You feel it around him. Hello? Then you find people with lust. You just with that person and suddenly these things from the past just rock up. You come into the presence of, of someone, but there's deception. And in the past, you were deceived. But here you find three others. And in the presence of those people, it's just like they haven't given you such a major lot of reason why to be deceived again. They just started to talk. And it's like you are captivated into that conversation. Captivated into the conversation because you are in the presence of. That's why the Word of God talks also about familiar spirits. That's demonic spirits that I'm familiar with. They are living with me. I know them. They know me. Because I've walked with that depression. Or I've walked with that rejection. Or I've walked with that negativity. Or I've walked with that lust. Or I've walked with that bitterness. Or I've walked with these stuff. I'm familiar with them. They feel okay in my presence. They can make their home in my presence, because what I allow in my soul. Or, no, God, help me, please, that I will be baptized. You said you will. You said you will. You will make sure. And that is your commitment, Jesus, that you said you will baptize me in the Holy Spirit and in holy fire. Not a destructive fire, what the enemy will bring, and that will destroy you. Fire that will destroy, destructive fire. No, fire that will beautify your life. Fire that will beautify your life. That's what Jesus will come and do as the baptizer in the presence. Then, last one, 1 Corinthians 3.16. This was Luke 3.16 and 1 Corinthians 3.16. I'm ending off with that. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Talking about what will be built and what will not be built. What will be burned away in the day that we will be saved as through fire. But whatever we build will, be, will, be, will disappear if we didn't build accurately with gold. And that's what God has given us. Verse 16. Don't you know... That you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst. He is dealing with a lot of stuff. And if you can, please, if you could go and read verse 1, 1 to 15. And then why he says, don't you know? Deal with this. Deal with this in your life. Build that what has eternal value. Build a life on these foundations. Do it in this way. Do it in that. You. Why do I ask you all of this? Because you are supposed to know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are supposed to know whose presence is within you. Whose presence is within you. Are you with me? Now, they say... Now, can a Christian have devils inside of them? Oh, that was a question many raised. You cannot be demon-possessed. 
You cannot be demon possessed if you're a child of God because your spirit became new. Everything in your spirit became new. Your spirit is perfect. The fullness of God is dwelling in your spirit. Everything is new. Demon possessed. Is there can be a guy out there and the demonic is so in his soul that he even took over the essence of that, the being of that person. Demon possessed. But a child of God, perfect in your spirit, the enemy cannot touch your spirit. But in your soul, you can have the attachments. Where you can have illegal squatters. Hello? He's, they are not the owner of the house. You're a child of God. You belong to Christ. That's finished. That is settled. That is it. That is it. It's God's house. It's a temple of the Holy Spirit. But you can have illegal squatters in the temple. You can make it a den of robbers. Like Jesus said about the temple. With how you trade with what you want and what you don't want. And you know, they didn't sell at the temple, they didn't sell the, 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 idol, the idols. Afghos bilkis in huikis. They didn't sell that rubbish. They sold what was necessary for the temple. The doves and the this and the that. You can see things in your life. It's necessary. And it's for a good cause. It was all at the temple for a good cause. And what everything that was for a good cause, Jesus threw over. Only place where he got a holy aggression. Where people did something for a very good cause. But the motivation was wrong. My house will be a house of prayer. It will be a place where people are positioned accurately before God. House of prayer. Prayer is positioning. Everybody, prayer is positioning. And you need to position yourself this year like never before, accurately before the Lord. I'm ending off with that. Really, my brother, prayer. The church needs to get in prayer. If it's horrific, the stats, how churches just disappear. Where the church is just gone. The stats of how church is just it's gone and pastors just need to find a new job. People that we phone, contacts where we ministered as Criare for a week or two, phone. And then for the first time, there's a list of churches that don't exist anymore. Oh, man. We have God's grace over our lives. Amen. And we must make sure we remember. And be grateful, be grateful, be grateful for what we have in Christ. Let it be so. But prayer, prayer, position yourself accurately. And even if you do something with the right motive, with the right motive, it could be the thing where Jesus wants to come and throw it over. And say, no, don't make my father's house a den of robbers. We are collectively and you are individually the temple of the Holy Spirit. Have respect and the right protocol in the temple. Yes, it's also becoming the home where you must just be yourself and have this wonderful just time with God. But it's also a, there's also a protocol, the other side of the coin. Remember that. The protocol. Let's say I will have the right protocol. In the presence of God. But I will also be at home. With my father. God come through the Holy Spirit please. And God I pray that you will establish that in our lives in this year. Like never before. Come and do that what you want to do in our lives Lord. Please, Lord, come and do what you want to do. Show us how to be at home with you, Lord, as you want to be at home with us. That our lives will be our Father's home. Thank you for the honor, for the honor and the privilege that we can build with Jesus Christ, his church, 
so that his church can become our Father's home. We thank you for that, Father, for that privilege. Teach us how to be without performance, how to be with you, sharing hearts, and enjoy your word just because it's your words, just because it's your heart, just because it's you, Father God, expressing your heart, that we will be in love with your heart. We will be in love with your, with your word. We will hunger you for your word. We will thirst for your word. But also, Lord, teach us how to have protocol, how to have respect for your presence, how to respect your presence in our lives. That this temple will not become a den of robbers through good intentions. Thank you, Father, that you set us free. And through positioning our lives in prayer before you, that we can know that we know you have for us a hopeful future. The plans that you have for us for 2022, there's hope, there's excitement because you are in the center of all the plans that you have for our lives. So I pray that everybody's spirit will be lifted up beyond whatever is happening in our soul. So that we will be worshippers that will worship you in spirit and in truth. So we present ourselves by your grace through the blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.